I was at Deja Vu and Lethal B come up there and it was all mad, man. It was all crazy. Really? Yeah, what, on top of the roof. Off? Yeah, me, bro. Like, <laughs> what, they, what, what? Well, I played this, I played this dub. Yeah. You know, back in the grind days, you just play a little dub. It didn't, yeah. like, it's, it's no big deal. I'm yeah. on Deja, Friday night, yeah. 8 to 10. And uh, Terra Danger giving me this dub that Lethal, the original Lethal, had done to Lethal B. Oh, so I'm like, it's fine. And he was coming on the radio. He was coming on that night with, with Bruiser that was coming up as my guest. But before they got there, I played this dub, right? About half an hour later, brother, the doors just come booting open, yeah? And just, uh, I see Lethal come right in with what? Bag of Man. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bag at, of Man. Towards you? At you? At me, bro. What do you mean? Me? I'm the only one in there. Well, my, my boy was in there and he was like, what's going on? Anyway, this guy, one of his mates got me like this, yeah? <laughs> He's like, where's, what's going, where is he, where is he? Killer, killer, bo- 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 podcast, killer, killer, official, dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Some stories right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, desire to be. It's a sunny day out there, but we ain't sleeping. Anyone that's got the television app knows what time it is. For the sport in art, street culture, and more, from mini mixes to big docs, small docs, and a notorious podcast. We're out here, we're really doing it. Big shout out to our sponsors, Hodder Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, today's show, people, is with a person that, in my opinion, embodies the whole 360 of street culture within production and more. Uh, the, the DJ culture is a lot more colourful with him. Um, original Reckless Crew, from grime to drum and bass to, I mean, to, it's the international sound and the sound that we all love in uh, what is going on in the dance floor right now. Scratch a DVA, Scratch Clark, how are we, my Easy, brother? man, I'm good, man, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't believe you literally just said Reckless Crew, bruv. Mm. Reckless Crew, mm. bruv. Wow, mm. that's that's like the first crew I was ever in. Yeah, sleep, bruv. How do you know anyone yeah, knew that? Sleep, bruv. Because people would consider Aftershock yeah. being the first thing, yeah, yeah. but yeah, Reckless Crew, yeah. Know where we begin, because without the beginning, we don't know where we're going. That's fact. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're talking a beautiful era in, I guess it's early Channel U, wasn't it? The Reckless Crew thing. Maybe even soon. That thing that was maybe before that, yeah, Crazy. for sure. Yeah, Reckless Crew would have been before, because that was Jungle. Mm. That was like Jungle times. That was Terra Danger, basically. Big Mad. up Terra Danger. Yeah. Um, that was Terra Danger's crew we mm. put together, mm. and... Um, I come in much later, but it was made up of original members, DWE. Crazy. We well, had a lot of Forest Gate going. Mm. So DWE, um, Hyper, Hitman Hyper, uh, Triple Threat. Bruiser? Bruiser, yeah. Uh, Triple Threat Bruiser. And yeah, uh, Interlude as well. He was also a Ritz DJ. And myself, yeah. Man, you come from so much fucking pedigree. It's crazy. The, le- the, the leverage of levels here that you embody, it must be quite hard. And we did kind of allude to it in the beginning before cameras came on, of course. But you, you have a head for different genres. You have a, you have a movement for different, different scenes. That, that must come with its pluses and minuses, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that uh, I think people might... People st- Maybe not so much now, with the era of artists and DJs who come out now, because yeah. it's more accepted. But I think in in I think that the time before us it was accepted. Our time it wasn't, and the time after us is accepted. Mm. That's how I feel because when I hear other another DJs who I've always looked up to and jungle DJs, and they come in playing all sorts of different stuff, you know, in in the raves like their mix go from like you know breaks to this to that to disco whatever. Mm. And I think that while when I was coming through in like. Well, when I started with Hyperdub Records, which is like 2009 mm. era, you 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 played one genre. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? You didn't. You played like grime, or you played UK funky, or you played this or that. And I think there was like very few DJs who was playing everything, and that was fine. But it wasn't. It was kind of frowned upon. So for me, it's like I'm never gonna 
I mean, yeah, you, people might know me from this or people might know me from that. They might know me from Grime and they might know me from UK Funky or RNG. Yeah. That time, period of time I was doing RNG. Or, 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 or just from radio or Rinse. Mm. Rinse FM. Do you know what I mean? Or even One Extra, maybe. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. we was on One Extra as well. So. But NTS and all that, you know what I mean? You've, got, you've ballooned and orbited in all of, within the whole culture. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I've definitely been part of a lot of things for sure. Um, to a lot of people out there, that that would seem like a, a level of synergy, serendipity, that you're in, happen to be in the right place with the, the the right interest of the of that time. Yeah, just that you know, I'm never gonna not do something what I like or what interests me. Like you know, so if I'm you know making. Uh, working with or working with Terra Danger here, it doesn't mean I can't go over there and do this here because mm. music's for everyone. It's everything. You know, I've said this a few times that like, no one ever complained when uh, Quincy Jones decided to go and work with Frank Sinatra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. then work with Michael Jackson and everybody else. It's like it's totally fine. Right? Yeah. But I feel like we come. Our generation was like. Well, you can only make tunes. You can only give them to Logan Sama. Like, that's it. That was your. Mm-hmm. That was your lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was it. Good luck you. with that. That was <laughs> it for you. That's it. Don't yeah. be doing anything else. Yeah. Like, that's your musicianship stops here at one forty BPM. And like, I was never gonna do that. I didn't come in the game for that. I like too much music. I have too much different influences. So here I am doing whatever I want now. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm, game. You said game. That's an interesting word to use because the game. The game's tough, and if you catch a pattern of something that you deem as successful at being, it's hard to move yourself off a particular lane because there's a co- there's a commodity value there, and like you say, we're an age now where it's like commodity value is a key. <laughs> like, so you deviate and go, oh, I'm going to try this 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 lane. The game don't like that, does it? Not at all. No, financially, um, especially. Yeah, they don't like it. Um... I mean, I, and that's an example of, you know, because I spent a lot, I think I spent maybe most of my time in grime music, right? Mm. Um, and the changing point for me was uh, working at, in Purple E3. Remember Purple E3? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, On I the do. corner of my, yeah. my end, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that nightclub was on every weekend, yeah. right? But upstairs, there was a recording studio where I used to work as an engineer. Wow. Yes, for um, Media Gang, who is Troy from Practice Hours. Oh, A plus. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was his engineer, right? So, but he poached me from another studio. This is a, it's a long story, but I was in another studio in Ilford. He poached me from there and I started working for him there. So I was recording all the MCs and everything, same as I was doing, and more, because he, you know, he's very connected as well. Wow. And... Um, that's how I end up on a lot of mixtapes, etc. Like, you know, Scorcher, this, that. Because mm-hmm. everyone's right there, right? Yeah, yeah. Just grab them and then... Yeah, yeah. If you've got to be whatever. So, but the thing is, yeah, on a Friday, when I finished doing certain sessions, I would go down to the club and these guys are playing house music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so, Super D, yeah. Kismet, um, MA1. So I'm like, I'm in there and I'm like, you know, I like this vibe. And everyone's happy. Yeah. You know, it's a rave where people are happy. I mean, there can be grind ways which are happy, but it's not like this. Do you know what I'm saying? Different and kind of energy. Different energy, yeah. Mm. And it was very nice energy. Like, and you got all these classic house tunes being mixed with this mm. other stuff and some UK stuff. And I'm like, I quite like this. So I started to be influenced by that. Next minute, I turn up with a UK funky track and then they start playing it. And then I'll, mm. do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm. UK funky. And the funny thing right. is, is that, <laughs> so you do that for a bit. And then you see, like, I'll see, like, an MC, like, Mangro or Fuming or something, like, you know, years later, and like, oh, we didn't, you're still making music. It's because there's, not manga, let me not say it, but some of they're so, like, in one lane, and I've never been that person, like, you know what I'm mm. saying? It's all good to people in that, and stick to that, and good, that's that, but, mm. you know, I want to, I want to... Uh, let all my creativity out in different ways. Do you know what I'm trying oh, to say? I can and different with that. feelings. You know, I can relate with that, bro. Like, sometimes you just get that. That you. First of all, it's good. The good news is your brand precedes you. They recognise you off the bat. They remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. Uh, you, oh, you haven't seen your phrases. What's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still doing? Da, da, da. Still doing the music? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like okay, okay. We we've got to the halfway point now. It's like where have I suddenly disappeared off of your 
Yeah. It's like your, your conscious, you know. Speed in BPM. Yeah. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, Literally it? that. I feel like if you're not making that, that speed, it's like, my, that's not for me. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's really weird. But I mean, that was then. Like, we've all yeah, grown yeah, up yeah, now yeah. and yeah. The pe- people see things a bit different. But yeah, that was a changing point for me. It was that moment in that club at that time was when I was like, okay, I need to just uh, continue to do whatever I want to do. Bruv, the UK funky thing. I mean, big up Rosca. Big, big up, up Danao. You know, these <laughs> just... So many golden, like nuggets of just scene that the UK seems to just like gravitate to, and again, that's quite hard for anybody to switch their lanes. There, was, there are significant moments where it's almost like the green light is for everyone to jump on it. Like I remember when when drum and bass all of a sudden garage came. Everyone was converting to to garage. Right? Yeah, you know it's almost yeah. like you know it was almost like overnight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but in it, it's weird, isn't it? How all of a sudden this gate opens and it's like yeah. oh, we're all in. <laughs> yeah, I got to pick up Roscoe. You mentioned Roscoe. Pick up Roscoe. He was very guy. instrumental in um, when I was uh, you know I almost like transitioning from grime or whatever, but just being helpful with my funky stuff because he was very organised he still is a very super organised person he's like you know yeah. what if you do it like this and you put it he actually started telling me to release music because I made a lot of music in Grime a lot for a lot of years with Aftershot of everyone I didn't release none of it bro none of it none of the music I made released yeah it would be on radio and it would be in sets and whatever but nothing ever got released why? I didn't I don't know just because I don't know. I don't know what it was. I love the idea of it being artillery for DJ sets, though. And then yeah, but not gonna find but for, it. but but for, but to to make that to make a career out of it, money yeah. being paid. Like I was lucky because I, I was an engineer, so I was being paid that way. Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and you know, I was being paid the little bit it was by Rinse FM to do the radio show as well. So there was that. But if I didn't have these things, um, I would be getting nothing because it was just like ending up on mixtapes, mm. which I didn't own any rights to. Mm. I think the first time I got paid any money from any music I was making in Grand was by Wiley because it was an official album. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So which album was that? Playtime's over. Mm, yeah. It. So so when I moved in, when uh, you know I started chatting with Roscoe, and Roscoe was like, Roscoe was the guy. Like, Roscoe made a tune and released it. Just like, like one time I went to Rhythm Division and he had like five racks to himself. Like he just released everything. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna like put some money together and just release stuff. So I did, and I started getting money back. I'm like. Wow. Oh, okay, wow. cool. Yeah. So, I mean, not that I didn't release anything before, because back in 2001, I released a grime track, but it was kind of garage. It's like grimy garage year, right? Mm-hmm. That was called The End and Curve Call, right? Mm-hmm. Back, back then. But then I never released anything. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. All that whole time of grime, I didn't release nothing. So, um, Vinyl, CDs, da, 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 nothing. Or nothing. Did not, no, no releases at all. I was just on other people's mixtapes. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And then, and then uh, yeah, so getting making this new system with the funky it was like okay cool i can build something here because i feel like in grime no one was really releasing records too tough mm-hmm. only very few um anyway so it was different so i was now a career was starting to be made and then i connected with hyperdub who's a great electronic underground label and mm-hmm. then it's like that then furthers career and then then you're like you're looking you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, this is why, this is how I can do it. And Roscoe was uh, very, like, much, like, instrumental in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he's sure. a good man. He's a yeah. really good man. Um, okay, let's, let's, so let's strip back to, to the beginning because um, I feel like what you're talking about, I definitely want to get into the mechanics of, like, how you go into the mindset of being the uh, behind the board still all of a sudden putting those records out and making those moves because there'd be a lot of people out there that just have, you know, this is all very, this is a luxurious conversation we're going to have here. But um, from the beginning, uh, born in? Uh, Ilford. And grew up? Grew up in Ilford as well. Ilford, yeah. Well, actually, it's, it's uh, Clayhall. Do you know Clayhall? Mm, uh, it's like, it's Ilford. It comes under Ilford, but it's like not the Ilford that you think like in the city centre. Mm-hmm. It's like just a bit further out. Okay. IG post, like more Woodford even. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. like that. It's like in between Woodford and Ilford. It's weird. Nice. Yeah. Nice area. Yeah, it's all right, but I moved out of there as fast as I could. Yeah, like, as soon as I got to uh, eighteen, I moved out yeah. to Brixton. No, I, w- I went to Walthamstow. Walthamstow first. Yeah, because for me, I felt like uh, it's cool now. I went to school in Catrum, in 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 Ilford, Essex. But it's like I don't know. I just felt at the time, even with music, mm. you know, what I mean, I felt like what I wanted to do. There wasn't any of it. Wasn't around. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, in fact, funny story. I was. I was, was I still at school? I was still at school at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was still at school. I'm at the 169 bus stop 
yeah, waiting for a bus with a mate and we're arguing about music. Something about, where's my tape? You know, like, like, like <laughs> sold my tape. One of them ones, yeah. This is, this is the ones back in the day, the, re the real debates. <laughs> yeah, like who's got the tape? Do you know what I'm saying? Because there's only one. Like. Yeah, that's it. It needs to be de developed and repeat, repeat, recorded. Right, exactly. And uh, we're having this argument and this guy comes over to us, um, this tall white guy, he's like, you guys like music, yeah? What, jungle music? Yeah. He's like, okay, cool. What, are you interested in making any music? And I was. I was. I'd already tried to make some music in a studio. Where I paid money with friends, went to the studio in Ilford. So I'm like, yeah. He goes, listen, I'll give you this number. There's a guy I know. He's an engineer. That guy happened to be Roy B, who was almost part of management of Rinse FM back in the jungle days. What? Yeah, in Mile End. So I would travel on a Saturday to Mile End to Roy B's house. What was his producer name? He had a label called Keyside Records, but Mad Bones. His name was Mad Bones and he used to make Jungle. Anyway, linked with Zinc and all these people, but he was almost managed, part of management with Genius. And that's what he told me anyway. And he had a show on there. So I go to his studio on a Saturday. So I'm like, okay, I need to be in East London. Hold on, wait. So just a passing meet at a bus stop. Yeah, he randomly gave me a number and it was this guy. Isn't <laughs> that mad, Dave? Wow, that's yeah. mad. So I'm going to the studio in my lane too, and this guy's on rinse, and then people like Wiley and Slimsy and Carnage even, mm. and they'll always be around his flat, the area, because he lived off Roman Road. So then and he, go, come, he goes, I'm, I'm running this under eight Eames Rave, come there. And it was in Bethnal Green, so I'll go there and I'll see people like Maxwell D when they was kids, like young as that MC. I'm like, okay, cool, this doesn't happen in my area. I need to be up here, so... Yeah. Um, I think part of me moving out to East London was that, like, to be around what I wanted to be around. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, you know, I started doing pirate radio and stuff at those times, and there was always, no, there was never in Ilford. Do you know what I'm saying? There was always in East London somewhere. It found you. Kind of, in a roundabout way, yeah. That's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... But, I, I mean, I was, I was into it, and I wanted to make music, but it just happened that day. Yeah. And then, so the links were made from that, and then, you know, later on in life, when I started doing pirate radio, that like, people might... They remember your face from, oh, that's the guy who was in that under ratings wave years ago mm. with, with Roy. And mm. So it's like by association and, you know, boom. Everything's association, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's, it's getting where you fit in and keep Facts. it. It's true, isn't it? That's real talk. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't the only... I had, I had a lot of good people around me. My brother as well. My brother, Neil Matthew, they're both like... My whole family's music oriented. Big up the family? Yeah, my whole, my whole family's music orientated. Really? Yeah, for sure. My sister even sung on some tracks and uh, for MC Navigator. Well, so what were you listening to? Really? Yeah, yeah. Big well, up Navi. Well, that's that's my niece's <sighs> that's my niece's dad actually. So yeah, big big up Navi. But um, yeah. stop it. That's yeah, yeah, bonkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up Navigator. Yeah, yeah. And even even that, I've said this before as well. That but that was a even learning that he was an MC was a big turning point because I love music and um, my brother. I used to share a room with my brother Matthew, right? And he had, it was kind of like this, but more. He had like flyers, plaster all over the wall. My side as well. Like, <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have my own side. Like all these flyers with these raves, mm -hmm. it gone and stuff. And then one day I was, my mum was in the room. My brother was out. I looked at one of, the, one of the posters and it was a picture of Navigator. But I knew as, as, as Raymond. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mum, what's, what's he doing? Like, what's he doing on, on that picture? And it's like, well, you know he MCs. Like, what do you mean? It's like, well, he's a, he's, a, he's a rapper, like MC. Like, is it? So that was the changing point for me. Is that someone normal I knew yeah. could be this? Must have blown your mind. Because I thought it was that like, a separate thing. Clark Kent, Superman. Yeah, kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, really? What you could just do that? Yeah. All right, cool. And that 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 put like that like, energy in my backpack that you can do yeah. it. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? That he he's he's done it, so I can do it. He's, do the, he's the he's the MC embodiment of the diversifying at every turn cornerstone of real G. <laughs> real G. Yeah, yeah. man. Sound system on us. Yeah. Doesn't, the buck kind of stops with these guys over here. So when I see that, I was like, oh, that's interesting. So yeah, give me the sort of juice to be like, okay, cool. So it's possible. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, so yeah, I had that around me. Then also my brother, Neil, one of his best mates is a Persian, uh, Persian prince he used to go by. Okay. He's, his name was Same People and he made a massive garbage track called Dangerous. It was unlocked on. Okay. I don't know if you know. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it was, he made it with another guy, but they was both called same people. And he lived around the corner from us, right? So sometimes I'd go around there and see him on the computer, like Amiga 500s, like, what are you doing? Ooh, I thought that was for playing games. Yeah. Right? I thought that was playing games. But you know, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, he was making music. I'm like, what is that? So I get to see that sometimes. And that was another link to me to see that 
normal people I knew as just family doing it. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, it, it's, so it's normalised in your head. It's like, yeah. this is the music thing and this is that. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah th so I had that good connection around me. So it was always there, really. It was always there. So how did Reckless Crew go out of there? Because that was one of the first Inceptions. Yeah, yeah. So how did that, how did, how was that forged? I'm not sure how it was put together, but I'm like, because they all, they all live like five minute walk from each other, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, like, Bruiser was more Chingford and, and Triple Threat, who was lethal at the time, lived down Manor Park, but it's a forest gate thing, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got Footsie and, they're, and the, they're over there in, in Terrace on, like, near the Green Street, mm. right? Um, but I met, Lethal, who went on to be Triple Threat, and that's mm -hmm. another funny story because Lethal, there was two. I went to college with Lethal, but Lethal B also went there, and it was always trouble. Really? Yeah, yeah, Static. yeah, yeah. To the point where there was one time I'll probably talk about it there, but um, I was at Deja Vu, and Lethal B come up there, and it was all mad, man. It's all crazy. Really? Yeah, what, on top of off. Yeah, me, bro. Like, <laughs> what day? What, what? Well, I played this. I played this dub. Yeah. You know, back in grime days, you just play a little dub. Didn't, mm. like, it's, it's no big deal. I'm mm. on Deja, Friday night. Yeah. Eight to ten, and uh, Terra Danger had given me this dub that Lethal, the original Lethal, had done to Lethal B. Right. So I'm like, it's fine. And he was coming on the radio. He was coming on that night with with Bruiser. That was coming mm. up as my guest. But before they got there, I played this dub right. About half an hour later, bro, the doors just come booting open. Yeah, <laughs> and just uh, I see Lethal come right in with what? Bag of Man. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bag at, of man. Towards you? At you? At me, bro. What do you mean? Me? I'm the only one in there. Well, my, my boy was in there and he was like, what's going on? Anyway, this guy, one of his mates got me like this, yeah. <laughs> He's like, where's, what's going Where is he? Where is he? Because I'm saying they're coming, right? Um... So he's got me up like this. I remember this is fine. Lethal. He's like, "Where's the CD? Where's all my CDs were scattered all over the thing, yeah." And it's it's, it's found it's there like Lethal B this written in like. Oh yeah, I remember my. it great. And he went, yeah, snapped it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, where is he? Where is he? Where's? And he's got my phone. And he's gone into my last calls. I mean, I'm sure you don't care now because this was so long ago. Yeah, 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 I know yeah, This happened all the time. I uh, went to my last calls and he's seen it and he's called him and so they're having it out on the phone. But anyway, yeah, that's the sort of stuff it was. But it, you said it. this happened all the time. Pirate radio is different. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pirate happened radio all the time. Yeah, stuff that happened all the time. So it wasn't just left for the mic for people to be sending each. It really got that. Yeah, well, stuff will happen. Stuff will go. Like someone will have a problem with someone, and then they'll be that. Like you know, we've seen it. It's all. Some of it's documented. Do you know what I mean? Some of it ain't. Yeah. You get me? But um, yeah, yeah, that was a time when I got it. But the end of the story is, is basically that he's thrown my... Well, he's he said he threw my phone off the roof, right? So I need my phone, obviously, right? Yeah. This is all happen This all happened on air. That the mic's on, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, I remember just going out downstairs, throwing him downstairs, and I think someone must have told management what was going on, or you oh, probably heard, didn't it? Yeah. We're probably big, listening big, in. Yeah, big, big, big up Sting, but... um. I remember getting down there and it was so weird because it was Friday night. I think nobody, like everyone was in the area. Because once I got downstairs, Wiley was there, uh, Maximum, like two tough crew was there. All Half what? of the grime scene was in the car park. I'm like, what's going on? Like everyone must have had nothing to do. We listened to the radio, like, oh, something's going on. So they all, woof, yeah, straight yeah. Down. Funny thing, that was the first set I ever did with Wiley that day. Really? Yeah, because he come up and ended up doing the rest of the show with me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. clouds, you know yeah. what I mean? But what yeah. did they all just come to the... You, to the rescue, was it? They no, just to the wanted... rescue. Was just like, what's going? I don't know what they were doing there, but it's funny because I remember um, Sting must have hanged out the window now because the security. Because remember, it's on top of a nightclub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it? It was called Club Space at the time, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think security. So security wouldn't let anyone out, so no one could drive out. And I remember Sting going, "Right, and Scratcher doesn't get his phone back. None of you are coming back on the station by Monday." <laughs> so. Yeah. And then I remember Diesel rang me up and said, come and get your phone. I went, it wasn't even my phone, it was just another phone, but I took yeah, it anyway. Yeah, yeah. So he must have actually phoned it. But anyway, yeah, man, like, that was a, uh, some reckless crew times. That's that why Lethal changed the name to Triple, but them times there, so Triple Threat, I met him at college, at Rebbish College. Mm -hmm. And then he introduced me to Terror, Terror Danger. He was like, look, he makes music, he's into it, his DJs, rare, rare. Man. In Terror's house then, Terror's like, oh, is it? So I start, I'm making tunes at college now. Yeah. And then Terra's like, you know, you should, you should, you should cut a dub play. And I'm like, what do you mean? 
It's like, come with me. And he took me to Holloway, to Music yeah. Cast. Yeah. So now I'm I'm going to Holloway every Saturday. Now I'm you're meeting the drum and bass up. guys as well. Right, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I'm seeing Man P Swift yeah. and Brocky and Brian G and all these people come through and Ed Rush and Optical. And it's like, man, like... You know, bruh, 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 bruh. Like, you just yeah. moved differently. You were just quick off it. And you're just meeting all these cats from different... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not that anyone paid you any mind back then. Like, in drum and bass time, like, come yeah. on, man. Yeah, yeah. Pain, you had no, to be a partic- <laughs> on a particular seat yeah, on a yeah, particular yeah. table. Yeah. Didn't matter though, bro. I yeah. would go there and waste my whole Saturday yeah. waiting to cut one dub yeah, yeah, just yeah. because it was a whole networking hub. You know what I'm saying? Not that I've managed to network with anyone of that mm. calibre, but you know, you get to hear new tunes and it inspires you to go back and make a banger, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah you must yeah, have been maybe... privy to a lot of... What, Music House? Fly on the wall shit, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Music House was great. Everyone and anyone was there. like, And that's... Garage, grime, and drum and bass. Everyone was there. And all the yeah. reggae and dub man as well. Like, yeah. Everyone's cutting. You're waiting all day. But it's just good to see, like, you know, just Andy C, everyone. So when you're when you're when you're like in this space, it's 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 uh, it's inspiring, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So and I gotta big up Terra Danger for that, because maybe yeah. I'd never have cut a plate if you never took it. Big up Terra Danger yeah. with a fan on this podcast, man. You like when you have people like that on your corner. I don't know. You, there's a sense of, we all have a sense of self worth and there is a sense of belief. But you sometimes you need that little kick, that little bit of go on, go and do it. Or else you just wouldn't. Yeah. You just wouldn't. And it's, it's also justified in the sense that there's, it's clarification actually that you are, you've got the, potential to go somewhere and these people are behind you and pushing you forward yeah. to do the right things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was very lucky to have like someone out there in my corner to tell me to do that, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then and then, you know, then I will be, I will do the same. Mm. I think that's what it's about. You know what I mean? Like if you can see a sight in someone then maybe give them advice to go over there and why don't you give your tune to such and such DJ and then mm-hmm. next minute they're playing it and pass then, it on, isn't it? Yeah, Forward right. it on. You know what I mean? That's that's what so that definitely happened to me a good few times. Mm. For sure. Yeah, man. Very lucky, man. Very lucky. Talk to me about the um, production process, particularly now, because it seems to me that like you're saying, you've engineered for, for years before you kind of got Yeah, to, I engineered, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you were DJing at the same time. You were influenced by a load of different sounds and you were on a cutting edge because you were always in the cutting Spots, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the first engineering job I got, uh, so I did a B Tech diploma. Mm. I didn't even finish it, but I did that at Newham, Newham College. And then um, these, I don't even know how they found out, but I was living in Ilford, right? And these guys who ran this studio, there was these Indian brothers. They, someone must have told them that I was a, I had been learning like how to use equipment because I was. Mm-hmm. So they asked me to come in for a meeting. They're like, listen, we've got this studio. And um, we need you to record some Bangor stuff. We've got these Bangor eyes. If you do that, keys are yours. That's it. Well, I worked there for years, bro. Like, they just gave me the keys. They still studio, big studio, big mixing desk, everything. And all they wanted you to just... just every now and again, they need to record some gold drums, etc., and yeah. the Serengi and do some Bangor yeah, stuff. Some gold, that's gold. Yeah, so I did that. And the, I could just go in there, 24, whatever. It was mine, basically. So then certain MCs in the area started hearing... <laughs> Well, Wiley started coming as well because he was seeing a girl who lived not too far, right? Okay. So, and then he heard that someone near where he was staying was recording. That was enough. He, and where he always needs to record, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's just like, can I come there? So he started coming. And then whenever other MC heard Wiley was coming, they went to come. Mm. And then so next minute, they're coming there. And that's how I met Troy A+, Plus, who then pushed mm. me to mm. go over to there. So it's mad. But big up... Uh, Dow Beer and Rand from Orange Productions. They were the guys who gave me the first job. Wow. Yeah. F- of, of that time, I mean, Wiley is, is a, a beast producer. I mean, the, the whole Esky sound is just g- 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 era defining. But then there was others that, you know, I, I still rate Target as a producer. He's a fucking awesome producer. Danny Weed, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. All these yeah, guys. yeah, they made some of my favourite music, man. Yeah. yeah. Back then, yeah, man. Uh, He's another one as well. I used to go to Danny's house and you know, give some advice to, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, these are people like, it's funny because like, you know, <laughs> back back then it's like, um, 
I almost felt like I needed to live in Bow or something because mm. that's where all the action was happening. Yeah, yeah. It, like I'll go and get my records from Room Division or, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, and it's like, that was, it was like a hot spot, it was a hub. So I'd go down to the courts and meet Danny Weed and go to his yard and he'll load me up with tracks and I'll go to Rinse and batter that, you know what mm. I'm saying? So yeah. Um, yeah, them guys are, they was inspirational by them for sure. Mm. And what they did with like the, um, Plug sounds, then yeah, the plug sounds. Man, come on, man, it's game changing stuff. Game changing so. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Actually, d- d- definably British as well. It's just, yeah. so, and it spawned like, like okay, UK funky had it has its own name, but the, the dubstep for sure, like yeah. the sub low stuff. You know, Johnny Cash and that. I yeah. Mean, Actually, Johnny Cash maybe was a little earlier than that, wasn't he? I was driving through Cricklewood and I was thinking about him. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I remember, yeah. I'm, but I will come all the way up here yeah. to get tunes from Johnny Cash. Yeah. Because he would always be like, I'm not sending nothing. Mm. So he'll make me come up here and get like, did I, Did he take me? To, was there a cutting house around here? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah he took me. He, I'll, cut, I'll have to come up here to cut his tunes. He wouldn't give them to me to go and He's cut He's so cuts. west. <laughs> <laughs> Big up. So he used to be a graffiti writer as well. You know the story? Oh, swear down. Bro, he was the original graffiti writer from around here back in the 80s. He founded a lot of the Hall of Fames around here. Wow. He was, he, I didn't he's know been, that. Yeah, he's been I would never know that from his Instagram. I'm going to show you some of his pieces. Oh, sick, sick, sick. Yeah, yeah, he's put, he doesn't, he's, he keeps on the low level. Right, right, right. But, but he, he's an amazing writer as well. He pioneers a lot of things, so it didn't surprise me. Sub, sub low for me was, and listen, comment below, but I'm just, I'm just saying that was one of the earliest inceptions of what grime and dubstep was to become. I was going to say that because it's funny, someone even said this the other day, I can't remember who I was, but someone said that maybe... What Johnny Cash was doing could be considered the actual first grime. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But it's, because it depends on where you are, and, yeah, yeah. and I think that maybe like it kind of all happened at the same time. Maybe mm. it could be that as well. Everyone, I think now as everyone's got older, everyone tries to claim, "Oh, it was me," or yeah. it was us, or it was create this. their own narratives. Yeah, and shit. you know, like. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, we all do it. It wasn't that before. Everyone was. Do you just remember we did that thing? <laughs> <Yeah. actually. laughs> but yeah, like. Um, I don't, it's like, it's like how I feel about, I don't talk about a lot of other people here, but it's how I feel about LB and Dubstep. Mm. Like, does he get credited for maybe possibly being the insect? Obviously, you have um, Horsepower. Horsepower. Do you know what I'm saying? Big up Reefer. But horsepower. the sound of going from garage into Dubstep, yeah. like, are we not going to mention LB or something? Yeah, yeah, like, come what? on. Like, listen to it. With you. So And Horsepower don't get the fucking shine. It's almost yeah, like... yeah. Oh yeah, and them. Nah, no, man, they, these these no, guys were. That's the... really is it. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, like you know, I'm I'm not you know the dubstep person, but I don't know if, if you, you know just names. Listen and look yeah. and hear. You can maybe pinpoint back to somewhere in between LB and Horsepower. Right? That's right. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So and I feel that's the same with Grime in a way where, you know, I could never claim to anything. You know, people say, oh, like I started R and G. I didn't. I was the first person to. That's one thing I did release in Grime, but it was only a CD. And it was called Voice of Grime. And it was 22 singers on Grime. And I was the first person to put it out as a product. With, with vocalists. With vocalists on Grime. Sing, singers on Grime. Wow. I was the first person to actually release a product of that. So people say, oh, well, I was, but it wasn't. It was actually Terra Danger again. Really? Do you know what I mean? That's another thing. Yeah, like he was the one, like he did the Sadie and Kano. Yeah, Sadie and Kano, so sure. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, and so sure, which never actually properly came out. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the likes of myself and Da Vinci was like, oh, this is dope, like, and where we love R&B and yeah. Grime. So I'll do a bit of that. But then I put out that, that project. So people say, oh, you, but it wasn't. It was Terra Danger and Da Vinci. They were the video. Yeah, but they were the inception. to hold a crown of, you know, these are informative times for a lot of people. T- to be the first to do those sorts of things. I mean, I got it with beatboxing, you man. It's like, when you're the first to do something, people, particularly in the industry, never forget that shit. Right. Because it 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 shifts the dynamic. Yeah, you know, you've got contemporary singers singing on a whole album or yeah. on a whole project. Yeah. People remember that, don't they? Yeah. When you die. <laughs> 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 that's when they remember. And that's looking on the bright side. <laughs> um, talk to me about Rinse back in the day. I mean, because, you know, this was seismic of a platform of a place where Grime had a home. G- g- Bass music had a home. Yeah. Yeah. And it was straight off the organic pirate airwaves. And, and all of a sudden, it, like Cool FM and before, it, it had its own, it just had its own youthful energy, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rinse back in the day was 
I mean, it is still doing a like, major job. You know what I'm saying? But mm. back when I used to go there, being on it, and even before that, because I, before I was even on it, I would go there with Reckless Crew. Mm. I never, I think that like, interlude let me have a mix on there once, but I wasn't on there like that. I was mm. just part of the gang. Um, and I would go to the Treehouse studio. Do you, yeah, do you remember that? man, of course. Cool. Yeah, yeah, climb through the little hole and that. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. oh, what's yeah. the name of the guy that had that? Uh, what, someone owned it? Yeah, I think it was. I have no idea. Because wasn't it two stations in there at yeah, one yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had the curtain, because they had the yeah, other yeah, station yeah, on the other yeah. side. But yeah, I got up there, and then so I, you know, sometimes I get there early, and G will be there, and Genius, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember that them times, and then I had some time on One Extra with Terra, and then after One Extra, I remember I was in Rhythm Division, I see G. I was speaking to Uncle Dugs. Mm-hmm. I think I see G and, and Slim, and they were like, why don't you just come to Rinse? So then I, I thought, okay, cool. And I went there and I started doing a Friday show, I think it was, after or before Spyro, just playing Grime. But because I like to talk, I was talking a lot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Sarah Lockhart, big up Sarah Lockhart. Mm, big up and, Sarah, and G, yeah. they hit me up and they said, do you, do you want to do a breakfast show? And I'm like, not really. Like, and they were like, oh, are you sure? Like, because you're, you're good at talking and stuff. Like, if you come on every day, like, we'll, we'll get you breakfast and we'll get you coffee and we'll sort your ride. So then I started doing that, and that's when I started doing the growing breakfast. But but they in their mind they needed me to do that because they wanted to start what they was end up doing. Uh, they needed to create some sort of structure. Yeah. And the breakfast show was structure. Yeah. It was like I need something which is there every day. People have breakfast. There needs to be something yeah, going on. That's what like, they had it in their mind where they wanted to go, and mm. they wanted it to start there. Mm. So that that was the start of it. Do you know what I mean? And then it's funny. That's why when they got the license, they announced it on my show. It was crazy in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a mad time. I, I'm just going to do my show like any other day, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm in there and I see Sarah come in. I thought, that's a bit early for her. Like, cool. Then I see G. Then I see Charles. Then I see Zinc. <laughs> all all the kind of rolling in. <laughs> Why is it? Wait, I thought I was getting sacked, bro. I thought, <laughs> what's happened? Because the show was a pretty mad show. There were some crazy moments on that show. I thought, am I going to get sacked? Yeah. And it was a really like, Weird, like tense time. Yeah, and they don't calm your anxiety. They nah, just, they not just. Not get... at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but yeah, they come in and they said, "Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna announce that we're going legal." And they've done it on the show. It was crazy. Wow, yeah, man. you were there when that happened, and yeah, it's man, on your it was, show. It's on my show. Yeah, 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 man. So that was that. Um, and now look at Rinse today. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's just a whole nother body. And then with the adaptation of Cool FM as well, on mm-hmm. top of that, and the fact that it is. There's a control of a narrative now. Where you used to have like gatekeepers like, you know, Fab and Groove Rider or Friction, people right. like that that would be uh, representing the, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where and this is the, this is the this is the point I'm making the transferal of the culture, where BBC and the likes are trying to control the narrative, trying to control the presenters, trying to control the guests, trying to control. The, this has given like this mad incubation spot, this mad like explosion where rinse and cool have suddenly, they're the gatekeepers. It feels like they own a lot more in the stake of things than perhaps back in the day with. It's do, like, do you mean rinse are the gatekeepers? I feel like they're now in a prime place where you want the real shit, you go to the real place. Whereas before, mm. there used to be. Okay, there were gatekeepers so far as, you know, the, there was the proper dons. The proper dons would be on the radio, like, you know, whether it's um, UK hip hop or whether it's drum and bass, they used to be like, you know, Fabio and Groove Riders show. Right, got you, got you. But yeah. they've, been, they've been removed from that narrative mm. now on those bigger channels. But that has allowed Rinse and Cool to, be in, to grow even more in credibility and re- reliability and do you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I think it's both like for for that as a producer I'm like because there's two different minds I'm thinking of it here but as a producer I feel like it's the complete opposite. You reckon? Yeah, bro. Ooh, I've been saying this me. for a while, man. Tell um, me. So you know, for something like Rinse, being at Rinse, you know, like all the artists would go to Rinse and make sure their stuff was being played, whether it be Skepta or P-Money or anyone. So mm. you go to Rinse or Deja, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm talking more grime, right? Mm-hmm. Even, you know, you can even say some house stuff because you've got lots of Super D Kismet on there. Mm-hmm. You, want, you want them, man, playing Yeah, tunes, yeah, yeah. Right? 
but then I feel like as people got more into their artist bag and, and less of their just going and MCing bag, it became, well, I'm going to go to Mr. Jam first. Because yeah. I've realised that when I go to Mr. Jam, I actually also get paid. PRS. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't know if you noticed this, but PRS became way more important to people's lives in the industry, and rightly so, because it's money. Do you know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But I just feel that before, PRS wasn't the most spoke about thing in the income. Why was that? Because there was more income. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. People were pressing up records and they were getting their bread yeah. back, right? Yeah. Uh, then I guess, you know, et cetera, Lime White, et cetera, now, where we're at now with Spotify, mm. whatever. Mm. So it's like, PRS is important to people. So it's like, okay. If I go to Mr. Jam, at the time it's Mr. Jam, mm-hmm. right? If I go to Mr. Jam, um, then I'm gonna get I'm gonna get PRS. Mm. And they're gonna and then it might end up on another show and then I'm gonna get more PRS and it might end up on the playlist and I'm I'm yeah. but if I go to someone at Rinse, I'm not getting any PRS. Nah, I think true. that was a big game changer. So then to even to what it is now, I think they have now become the gatekeepers. Ooh. Well, you think anyone's going anywhere but Target or yeah, like, etc. Yeah. And then uh, when Annie Matt was on, it was Annie yeah. Matt and great because I, I loved getting any place from yeah, them because yeah, it was yeah, super duper yeah. helpful. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Annie Matt plays anything. It's going in various playlists it's on moving. Spotify. Yeah. Right. So I understand it, but it took the power. Like even I had to hit up uh, Souls of Streets one time because I, I would always get the promos and whatever, right? And it would be like, Played by Miss Jam, played by every single legal person, Manny Norte and all this. I'm like, hang on, we've been playing that tune for like three months. You ain't said Rince have been playing it, or I've been playing it, or Spyro has been playing it. Because it became not to matter anymore. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, you get me? So, we also, so I just, yeah. anyway, the reason why I say that is because I feel like it's, it's definitely, I feel like they're holding that gate now. Do you think they're locking people out not purposely like you know DJs are going to be DJs and they're always going to a lot of DJs want things first just because of that thing right but you know artists will go there because they know what they're going to get from it over a rinse FM Mm. they're going to get way more for them Mm. for for it you know what I'm saying yeah so so now it's like to get the new they're getting the new because they're playing it and then the next day it's on Spotify it's not being played on rinse for three years before it gets there it's going there then a week later it's on Spotify max so it's funneled a lot more smoothly. Yeah. But but I feel because of that, um, I can't really speak on Rinse because I'm not on Rinse. Do you know what I'm no. saying? I'm just speaking as a, as a DJ. Yeah, so yeah. Like, with that in mind, it's that certain artists of a certain calibre ain't caring about anything below BBC. And I understand. Yeah, yeah. Because it would make sense because the yeah. PRS is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that. Dude, being a DJ is a fucking powerful position, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? For real. So that's what, and then some people, like, you know, possibly maybe even might abuse that power. Do you know what I'm trying to say? That like, I think it's kind of stupid when someone's like, oh, if, uh, you know, I've seen it a million times, like, certain amount would be like, oh, I can't play that because someone else has played it. How much do you love music? Like, <laughs> how much do you, do you love music? Like, because if I like that, I'm playing it. I don't care. Love the song or not. When, it, yeah. who, how, which, I'm just going to play it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, there becomes this thing of when you know that you've got so much power and you know you can provide certain opportunities by playing something, then you start messing with it. Mm. Some people, I'm saying. And that, that's a whole other thing. Well, that's another thing, isn't it? How, how, how do you think, because some, some uh, and, uh, understandably, of course, some things are orchestrated to be like that, but when has the last been a song where DJs are like, hold on, all bets off, we're playing this because this bangs. Like, undoubtedly, this is the new... Sh- this is a this is the snowball effect here. Like, does that happen that often? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm trying it, to... It, it does does happen. does yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, off the top of my head... Uh, yeah, g- give like us a an example. Yeah. A track like... Okay, for maybe more recent now. I'll tell, yeah. I'll tell you a prime example right now is the new Jay Huss tune. Okay. New, new Jay Huss. Yeah, yeah. Jay Huss has been away for a while. He's yeah. back. Bang. And it's like, they, what, they, what I feel like people, the radio definitely want from Jay Huss is that, you know, that mm-hmm. vibe, lean up, like mm-hmm. some burner boy, that yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. whatever. Nah, they've got this. They've got this crazy. And I feel like, you know, it's very like, it's, it's, a, it's a dark track. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, live it Brave, too dark. Yeah. And, but they've had to play it. Radio's playing it, the mainstream planet, because it's Jay Huss and he hasn't been away. He's been away and he's back and he's he's given that. 
Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we've got to play that, whether it's dark or not. Mm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's, because... challenging, it's challenging the status quo of what? It's, it's putting it on the DJs, isn't it? Right. Well, I'm, I'm making something different. Yeah. Get with it. Yeah. It's just bars, bro. It's just bars, bars. Like it's, I, I like it. You mm. know what I'm saying? It's, it's bars, but, um, you know, ain't, a, ain't a, the song, song, song that you want, that I know radio want to play. You know that like when you go to a playlist meeting or whatever, they want that radio-friendly mm. track. It ain't radio-friendly, but it's because it's Jay Hurston, because he's been away so long, they've got to play it. Mm. That's what I'm talking about when it when it doesn't when it just sort of like it cuts through just because protocol in it as well. Like I think long gone are the times where it's like you have to have a <laughs> you know build up drop or first course first. Do you know what I mean it's yeah no nah, these yeah, things nah. are gone. Yeah yeah that's long gone. Yeah, yeah. good as well. Yeah, I think people should be able to do what they want. Yeah, you get me. And and I think I think DJs respond to that well as well. But it's just sometimes the shackles are on them to fulfill a quota. Did you ever did you ever get that sort of resistance as a, on radio? Yeah, once. Uh, well, a couple of times in, in my radio time. Yeah, a couple of times, man. Like, I remember when when Vince did get the license, um, I was still doing my show and there were some sort of staff changes and whatever and they brought this guy in um, who was pretty high up at One Extra because mm. I remember him from when I was there. Mm. They brought him in to sort of like regulate my show. So he will sit, like, he'll sit behind me for the whole show and I'll just be doing my thing as normal, but then every now and again, be like, right. And this is, uh, at the time, he would have been like in his 50s, I think. Sorry if you're, you wasn't that old, but I'm just... <laughs> he was young at the time, man. I reckon he would have been in his 50s at that time. Mm. I'm not going to say it was. But um, he'll sit behind me, just monitoring, and he'll be like, right, play something I know. Do you get what I'm saying? That was, that was the turning point where it's like, oh, okay. You have an L sticker on your back or something? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, but... It's because of where they wanted to go. Do you get know what I'm trying to say? Where they wanted oh, to go. I mean, I respect it. At that time, I think they might have even changed the idea now because mm. listen to Rinse, it's just Rinse yeah, yeah, yeah. again. Yeah. But um, I think I think maybe it's a bit, they wasn't sure what's was going. On. Anyway, so I remember being that being told like you know trying to regulate. So if I got a place like you know, I go, okay, what am I going to do? I'm playing Michael Jackson now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Which I didn't mind because <laughs> I I would do that sometimes. But yeah. that was the first part of my stuff being regulated. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, even you know down to NTS now might say to me oh you've been playing a lot of club music tracks maybe get you know what I mean what get more oh, yeah. what get more like album based tunes yeah. or something out of your personal which is, favorites. which is fine to me I'm never yeah, doing love that. anything I don't want to do I love that I'm not doing anything I don't want to do because I love it all anyway mm. do you know what I'm saying mm. but yeah yeah definitely um, you know people run the radios they know how they want their radios to sound at the end of the mm. day. even if it, from a pirate level they just use it or you know Online digital, yeah, bro. Mm. Um, let's get let's get into the club side of things because I. How do you pull together? Because again, if you if not heard, scratches stuff. Jump on the Spotify, people. Come on, uh, I, I listen to it as just there's something for every environment. Now, how do you? How do you? Uh, <laughs> when I hear your mixes, it's like it's the, all bets are off. It's like you right. just go. Of course, the BPM is what counts. Yeah, yeah. But you go different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You move like it's like it's like a swarm of fish. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how do you pull that kind of thing together? And yeah. and 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 how do you envisage the environment? Like, what's the audience? How do? You, yeah. yeah. What's your audience? How it's do funny you, do you say it? that because that's a, what I'm thinking about a lot lately. Yeah. I don't think I'm doing it to the best that I can. I'll be honest with you, because I, I like so much different music and what I like what I. Really, the end goal is to get everything that I want into one set. You know, I've been asked to play all night in in a couple of clubs, and I've always said no because, like, I'm worried of how I'll put it together. Because I like too. It's like when you like too much different mm. things, it can be a problem. <laughs> so I've tried to rein my DJ sets in a bit, and at the moment, I'm like, you know, currently playing a lot of South African influenced music, mm. right? But then I have to sort of like get my grimy side off. So I'm p- putting some like grime acapellas, which I recorded because I'm an engineer, right? Onto the South African more stuff. More dubs, more yeah, yeah, dubs. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> so yeah, like that. Um, but the end goal is really to sort of like be playing everything, even if it's jungle and drum and bass. Like, because I mean, not that I haven't got to play that in the club because I have. Hmm. So, uh, but 
playing it, you know, going from like 100 BPM up to like 160 BPM and making sure it's done properly and everything in between. That's the end goal of what I really want to do. Mm. But it's, I guess it's being scared to put it together and stuff like that. Scared of in particular? Mm. Yeah, put it together properly. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I can do it, but it's got to be done properly. Because if you, yeah, because once you've offloaded, you can't go back. You want to, yeah. you, you just want to step correct. And yeah, like getting from one genre to another to another and yeah. doing it right. I yeah. think it's a skill. And, yeah. um, you know, I've always said, like, I came in the game to make music, not DJ. DJ is a, is a byproduct of, you know, getting that extra bag. Not yeah. that I don't, um, I'm not trying to say, like, uh, what's No, the no, word? you're not. Yeah. Having any disrespect to DJ no, at all. No, no. Because um, it's fun. I, I do like doing it. But I, if, if, if I had it my way, I would just make music. Hmm. Like I came in the game to make music. Well, you're sound engineer, and then you built up from there. It's just, yeah, yeah. You're you're, you're 360 all rounder. Yeah, you? that's what I came in the game to do. And then I, and even radio, even just doing radio presenting was also a kind of a mistake because that come about terror again. Like I'm, the thing about me is that a lot of my startup terror had his hand in something. Mm, mm, mm. Like so, I always make that known. There'll be people out there who will not mention people they might have forgot mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's clear that terror danger helped me a lot. You know what I'm saying? So sick. And um. Without even realizing sometimes, but um, he, so he also knew I love to talk on radio, like to talk a lot, basically. And uh, he, he said to me, Do you know what? One extra taking people on, why don't you go up there and try and get on Give there? A shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he got me a pilot, right? So I did a pilot, didn't get the show. They wanted him to do it. He didn't, maybe he didn't even know if they wanted him to do it or not, but they offered it to him. Mm. Out of the crew, Aftershock crew, you're going to want Terra Danger, right? So he's like, all right, cool, I'll do it. So he's gone up there, but he's brought me to go on his first show. Maybe he just needed a bit of courage, whatever, but he brought me up and goes, Look, I'll interview you or something. Interview me about what? I ain't got nothing. Dad. What's going on? Like, I'll interview you, don't worry. So we've gone up there. We end up talking for the whole show on one extra, right, as his first show. And then when we come out, the woman, she goes, do you want to come back next week? That was good. So I went back the next week. And she just kept asking me back every week. And then they just gave, they just, I was permanent on the show. Yo. Yeah, and that was a mistake because I just went up there for an interview, do you know what I'm saying? So everything... then I became doing presenting as well. So everything derived from Terror Danger. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it. Yeah, to big be fair. Yeah, big deal. You uh this is this is something we talked about just before we press record. But even within your mixes, even in on radio, you're you're doing AI versions of tracks. Yeah, yeah. So how does that how do you how do you articulate that as a presenter that, okay, this is going to be an AI thing? Well, like, how how's that work? Well, no, it was just like, you know, I'm hearing them online and I mm. want to play them on the radio. Yeah. I, like, I hear something, like, just like I hear any other tune, what's good, I want to share it with the world, right? Mm. So I'm hearing this stuff on my Instagram feed. And I'm like, I wonder what the listeners will think about this. Um, because it makes good talking points as mm. well, you know what I'm trying to say? So every week I've been playing one AI track that I've found online. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Then the times change. And right? then just we just have a discussion about it. And um, yeah, So you have the discussion after afterwards and then Yeah, because uh, on NTS you have that this NTS like yeah. chat in chat real time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they just go off and they say their thoughts and I say What's my the general thoughts, consensus when I mean they like I mean it's like Marmite, isn't it? You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. They like it, they don't like it, yeah, like yeah. but whatever. But the fact of the matter is is that it's it's coming. It's not gonna change. So you can't change it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so coming. It's what? Like, yeah, it's happening. I mean, like when certain contracts get made and done and it's going to be, I mean, isn't it Elon Musk's ex, Grimes? Yeah, that's right. He's so, is it yeah. his ex? I don't know. Maybe they're still I together. Think they're I think they're still together. Oh, okay. He's, I think. Yeah, he's kid's mum, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I know that she put out a track which was AI done of her vocals. And she said to producers to do what you want with it. And then she's made some of them official. Wow. Yeah, so... It's happening, bro. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's, it's, it's going to... I mean, what, what, what are you saying? Like, if someone yeah. made a thing of your thing yeah. and it sounded good, are you going to shut it down? Are you nah. going to... Just got to keep it moving, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm playing them. Like, Kanye singing One in a Million by Leah, Like, stuff like that. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But it sounds good. Does it? I mean, to me, it does sound good, man. I know, look... look I, 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 yeah, I mean, it's subjective as fuck. And... and like, with all the fear-mongering, you know what I mean? It's like, well, you can be scared of whatever as much as you want. You know, industry don't like change anyway, so you can yeah. quit the, them, them, you know, calling all these crazy shots of like, yeah, we've got to stop, uh, sanction this, and da, da. It's going to continue. It's going to continue. Look it's... at Timberland. You see that one? <coughs> Talk to me. 
uh, Timbo went online and he was like, oh, all my life I've, ever, I've wanted to work at Biggie. Never got the chance until now because of AI. Boom. Plays his tune. It's hard. Hard, like fresh bars. Fresh Timbo beat and fresh Biggie bars. Oh, God, that's I mad. Mean, wow. Why are we going to shut it down? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. I mean, there's bad music and there's good music anyway, so... Yeah. But do you, do you think it needs to be um, established, like, when you are going to play an AI tune, that it's, like, bracket <laughs> AI version? Or is that... Well, on Spotify, you can, it will say the artist and it will say AI next to it. Oh, safe. Yeah, so it's like, you know... I don't know what you're going to complain about, isn't it? It's B-I-G AI version. Oh, you'll kind of rate that, though. I like that. Yeah, it's not going to be, like, thing, you know what I mean? I'm open to it. I mean the doors are the, yeah man. Look, in the, the day, if you're a rapper and you you you're um you got writer's block, mm. <laughs> you, know what I mean? yeah. you know, send that verse, get get the fifteen k or whatever mm. it is. You know, like, you're good. You know what though, and this this again is more flowers your way. Scratch is like in a world where the the walls are closing in, and trust the trust factor on everything that we do can often be on the microscope. You can't afford to be sitting on the sidelines. You've got to be out there. You've got to have your handshake as your business card. You've got to have your brand as your face. You've got to be around and be present because if you're not, that trust is is the benefactor, isn't it? Because in a world now where you know, anyone can be anyone and do anything. And, uh, That's true. You, yeah. you know, you've got to be yourself. You've got to you be to, that yeah. person. You've got to be a, your own brand, haven't you? Yeah. Funny you say that. I was reading, I messaged, do you know Halogenics? No. Producer. Oh, hold on. Yeah, that does ring bells. Yeah, yeah. drum and bass. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, He he shared shared something on IG a couple of days ago saying Mm. that, um, you know, that he's tapping out the constant need to be visible all the time. He can't take it. And I just thought, it's just off back back of what you're saying about being out there, being Mm. around. I'm kind of, I'm kind of beginning to dislike that. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, I can't, I can't, I can't hide it, but like, I'm definitely sharing a lot less on online. Like, I love this game, I love the industry, and I love all the different parts mm-hmm. of it, even all this new stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. And but it's beginning to be a bit boring. That's it. It's boring. Monotonous. Yeah, bro. It's like I, I don't got to share everything. You ain't got to share everything. Yeah, but 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 maybe I do. Maybe you do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll talk. That was yeah. like, do I have to share or do I not? Like, can I can I sustain without sharing? I don't know. Well, you've got the legacy. But does that matter? It does matter. I don't know if it do. It does. I don't know. Shall I tell you what it does? Because um, it, it matters because um, as you, it's like a fine wine and that uh, is a, uh, a guarantee, a guarantee of trust. It's it's the thing that bonds you with the audience and new audiences is that you you have that history um, fault line. I, f- I, I I hear you and I feel like it does work. I, I I've been I've said this before as well that I feel like that's true up until a certain point and it stopped. Where where, where, where does that stop? When it, does that it stop? It stopped with like Loafer and Code Nine and that okay. cage. Oh feel, right, okay. yeah yeah. I feel like after that it became like there's no more legends. Do you think social media plays a big part in cutting off legend? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because all of a sudden, if a new platform arises, then the first dons that get on that are the history makers. Yeah. And then the people that didn't get on that all of a sudden only got 6,000 followers, but they were the, <laughs> yeah. they created the platform. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think, I think that's probably the case. Yeah, man, I think it plays a big part in it. But it just it certainly feels that way of where, I don't know, maybe it's a respect thing as well of how, you know, we've respected these and then the, you know what I'm trying to say like yeah, and, yeah. Then, and it's like maybe the ones after us don't sort of see us in that way as we see it's just different yeah you know what I'm trying to say so um, we've got to move with the climate something yeah so that thing about you know being um, what's what's the word you use like uh, to trust because you've been around yeah. for so long I don't know I think that they just see it as you just old now <laughs> I don't know, man. Some, see. In so, some cases, man, it's true. It's no, but I'm with you. I'm with you. Different mentality. I'm with and you. it's totally fine. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm not. Listen, I'm not mad about anything. I'm happy. Yeah. But, you don't. But, you go nowhere, my brother. Like you, uh, you're. No, you're doing I'm, I'm great mad. things. I, I'm. I'm totally fine. I'm just saying yeah. that, like, um, yeah, the social media thing is. Just, like, I never thought it would get to me, but it is. Is it hurting? It's. It's. It's just the fact. Like, 
I just don't want to have to use it. Yeah, I get it. I want to use it when I want to use it. Mm. That's it. Yeah. I never thought I'd say that, but I am saying it. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm. I was tweeting like a crate. Oh, listen, I was the guy on Twitter all the time. Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm just like, you know what? No. Yeah, Twitter just <laughs> my head in. <laughs> you know into it. I mean, Twitter just like. I ain't got that kind of banter. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I haven't got the kind of patience to debate about things. I'm like, I'm like I, I, you know, I used to like comic books, man. I like visuals, you know what I mean? Got visuals you. over text. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're on the Instagram then. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A bit of TikTok here and there. You know, I just, uh, I, I guess we all have our favourite lanes. Yeah. But I'd imagine Twitter's quite... I mean, I, all of them. It's all the yeah, same yeah, to me. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, so I've got this remix now. I just did a remix for... Monkey Town Records, <laughs> and uh, you know, cool. You you exchange the thing, you get paid. Thing that's the end of it, mm -hmm. right? You, obviously, you're gonna go if you're on radio. You go and play it. You go and play it in the clubs. But you know, the guy asked me if I could make some social media posts. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. you know, so I end up like doing a video of me driving with a car with a tune in the car. And yeah, stuff, I see and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit about making the tune as well. And it's just like, damn, like why? Like, you so don't just, enjoy just, it. just just making the remix isn't enough anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, hey, bro, look, I, sh I, I stand alongside you when I think about what we actually fucking signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> like, all I wanted to do is beatbox. That all I ever had on the, you know what I mean? That was what was written on the statement. That's what everyone got the memo. All I want to do is beatbox, right? But then as time goes on, other things happen. And then, and then like you say, a new fucking social media platform happens. And it's like, oh, man, I'll do some of that on that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's all good and that. I'm just saying, yeah, I think I think I am feeling a bit like how that guy feels and I might just be like it's more selective in Yeah, I think so. In stuff. But then it can be seen as boring, because if you're only just posting about your you know, your thing every once a week or whatever, you, you just lose like people people wanna see stuff. Yeah. It's it's mad, it's different. But yeah. It's funny you say that, because when I see your social media, particularly on your Instagram. Maybe, actually, to be fair, maybe your resistance and, and actually being a little bit more elusive, or so it seems, is more because you, you don't really want to be doing it. But what it yeah. actually looks like is a very cool um, proposition. Like, it's new. Because it looks hot. What are you doing? The social media looks hot. Right, you know okay. what I mean? It looks okay. new. Okay. And your elusiveness is what is part of the charm, I think. Right, okay, cool. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, whatever cool. you're doing is... Really it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, the more loose, it's almost like the less is more, it's almost like the less you give them, the more... Yeah, but I feel when you start like that, it's fine because like that people are used to that. Mm. But if you, if, if you, it's like people are like, you're right. You know, it's like, <laughs> what's going on? Are you ain't... Are you I'm just, just having... I've never had you for 12 hours. Scratch ain't really doing <laughs> that. Scratch ain't doing that well, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've had he's falling off, you know, because I ain't posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, whatever I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Are you okay, babe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but yeah, it's just different, different times, yeah, different times, man. The different future's times. bright with the future. So, what else is going on before we sign out? What else is going on? What's the future hold for Scratchy DVA? Yeah, I think, um, you know, like I've got a lot of music coming. Yeah. Uh, I've got the, you know, I'm very much involved in the collaboration of South Africa and club music and UK club Beautiful. music. So, that's where yeah. I'm at. So, with the gom and the Amma piano, mm -hmm. and what I like most about it is what we do to it. I don't know if you felt like that, like what UK does when they get hold of something sometimes can be like really yeah. beautiful. Like, and I feel like... 100%. With the likes of what like How Super, the label are doing and people like Scotty D and mm. Tribal Brothers and myself. It's kind of like, it's almost become this new UK funky in a roundabout mm. way. It it's has, like, yeah. It's, right? Yeah, because it's like UK funky is like sort of like whatever happened there. And then it's like, okay, we can we can get that vibe from this this yeah. South African stuff. We can get it because when in the UK funky times we was playing South African music in the mix a bit, yeah. little bits and bobs. But now it's the whole thing. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? So so when the producers here got hold of that sound and what we're doing to it, that's where I think I'm at. What, what I really like, um, and I started doing that in 2018. You know, like the sampling stuff from certain uh, gom tracks mm. and making my own thing and. Um, so I've got some more music coming along on that line, on my label. Oh, man. Yeah, just stuff. Producing for some artists as well. How exciting. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. But it's really fresh, right? it's new. Mm. Um, yeah, and I feel like for once I'm somewhere more near the forefront of something as opposed to in the mix with 50 other million other people. You get me? Yeah, well, I think that also comes with being in the game for long enough. You can see the forecasting things and all of a sudden... 
all of a sudden you leverage and you're just in, you're up at the top and you're ahead of the curve and it feels really fucking good, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it feels good, man. I mean, I've been I've, I've been to South Africa three times now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, they've got a different source. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it just come at a perfect time when I think that in the club music for us, like, the, remember the bass scene, like, mm-hmm. Night Slug Zero, mm-hmm. etc. And it was like, oh, this is getting really weird. There's no soul, there's no vibe. And then this music come from South Africa. It's like, oh, my God, like, mm. this is a vibe. And, um, yeah, so I've been heavily influenced by that. And, yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, super happy. See, so you get to know. Where can they find you, my brother? Uh, online, when I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, every Friday, NTS, 11 to 1. NTS yeah. is where it's at, bro. Oh, man, such a good station. Yeah. That's, that's literally a station for literally everyone. Yeah. Everyone, every age, every... It's got so much different yeah, things. Like, you could tune in and listen to, like, train... Like, they've got, mm. like, train noises for, like, an hour. Whale noises. No, you real talk. You, there's shows for that. Wow. And then you come back and you've got like DJ Bemper on Digger D DJ playing. Then you come back and you've got like, Children Zeus and Children. Yeah. It's literally like everything. Mm. Everything good is there. I'm all so, about yeah, that. That's, uh, that's what I need. Ladies and gentlemen, without fail, he's came. He saw it. He's delivered. Scratch Clark in the building, yes, man, my brother. You, Honestly, you, thank you so much again. If you know this is this is what this podcast all about. Uh, bringing merging different elements and different styles into one. Happy dandy, save your ass weekly podcast. Look, Killer Kala out, aim is out of fashion, yeah? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. That was Thank good. you for that, man. Thank you for that.